We're going to look a little bit at amino acid catabolism. So you know that amino acids are the monomers that comprise proteins. So our proteins are large macromolecules and we break them down as a macronutrient to get energy. So we oxidize the proteins in order to get um, the energy that we need in the form of ATP. We also use the amino acids that are produced from our proteins that they're made to build new proteins. Now the interesting thing about amino acids is that we can't store them. So our proteins and amino acids, they're not like um, fats where we can store them as TAGs in the body. It's not like glucose that we can store it as glycogen. Um, we don't have a way to store amino acids. So our intake of amino acids um, that we need as building blocks for new proteins either comes from the food we take in in our diet or from the breakdown of proteins into amino acids that can then be used to build new proteins. So what we're going to look at here is a little bit about um, what happens to our amino acids. So our amino acids are comprised of two parts. We have an alpha amino group. So remember that our amino acids have um, a nitrogen portion and then they also have a carbon skeleton. Now the body is quite economical, so if we have an excess of amino acids, remember we can't store them for when they're needed, so we need to break those amino acids down. So the carbon skeleton can get reused in other places in metabolism, so it can get fully oxidized to carbon dioxide plus water. We can have precursors um, for glucose we can have some amino acids, so depending on what the R group is, can be for acetyl-CoA and others for ketone bodies. So depending on the type of amino acid, it depends on um, where that carbon skeleton might end up. It has different fates. And then for our nitrogen portion, that is removed and ultimately in the urea cycle, that nitrogen is excreted from the body because it's not needed. So here we have our urea cycle. So this is a way that the body can eliminate the extra nitrogen that's not needed. You can see here I've written two steps that are involved in removing the alpha amino group from our amino acid. So that's any amino acid that's to be degraded. The first step is transamination. So that's where we take the alpha amino group from an amino acid and it's transferred to an alpha keto acid. Now, what does that mean? That means that our amino acid becomes an alpha keto acid and our alpha keto acid becomes an amino acid. And that process at first seems a little bit redundant, but our predominant alpha keto acid is alpha ketoglutarate, which you might remember is um, an intermediate in the TCA cycle. So, a, most of the time, or predominantly, what we're getting is an, our, our amino acid to be degraded transfers its alpha amino group to alpha ketoglutarate, which gives us glutamate most of the time. Um, as our new amino acid that's formed, and we get a new alpha keto acid. And this reaction is carried out by an enzyme, um, and that enzyme is known as an amino transferase, which is easy to remember because we're transferring an amino group or a transaminase. So you can see a transaminase is involved in the transamination reaction. The second reaction occurs um, with this glutamate that we have, and that is carried out by glutamate dehydrogenase. 
So again, as the name suggests, glutamate dehydrogenase, it acts on glutamate. It's a dehydrogenase, so we're thinking of oxidation and reduction reactions. Um, this is carried out in the mitochondria and it uses, it's interesting because it uses um, NAD plus or NADP plus as its cofactor. So it's interesting in that it can use either of those and obviously these are reduced in the process. As a result of that, we get ammonium ion being produced and that is what enters our urea cycle. So that's one of our nitrogens um, that then goes into the urea cycle and ultimately ends up being excreted in the urea molecule.